Well, folks, I don't like talking down stocks. I very rarely make a video addressing a, a stock in a negative light and um, saying I think a stock is a bubble, something like that, okay? So when I make a video like this, an unedited video, which, by the way, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free to do so. Hit that subscribe button, okay? When I make one of these videos, it has to be because there's a stock that is so insane that I feel I have to make a public service announcement, a PSA about this stock. And, and I don't enjoy doing this. I don't, I like to speak positively about stocks or I like to not say a dang thing, okay? But when it gets this out of hand, I even have to speak up. And that's when you know it's getting bad, okay? And my gosh, do we have a new bubble stock in the market, okay? Yes, it is Rivian, R-I-V-N. Now, first off, I understand there's some people making some money trading this stock here in the short term, okay? Respect, congrats, okay? But I'm telling you, this stock is, is destined to uh, fall in a massive, massive way. And the further this baby goes up here in the short term, the further this baby's gonna fall. It's like, you know, the, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. That is the definition of this Rivian stock. It is trading at like a $145 billion market capitalization here today. Okay, the stock obviously went public here very, very recently, and it has just gone through the roof. And we got to talk about everything that's going on here in regards to this. Okay, so remember, this is basically a pre-revenue company right now. A pre-revenue company is trading at $145 billion, a company that we have no clue how much demand they're going to have or not have over the coming years. We just really don't know. There's some pre-order numbers out there. No one really knows how strong those pre-order numbers are in terms of how many people will keep their pre-order numbers. And even with those pre-order numbers, even if not one person canceled, those numbers are minuscule compared to the $145 billion market cap. Like it's not even in consideration, okay? And this is basically a pre-revenue company trading at $145 billion. Here's what you could get. If you bought all these, you still wouldn't equal the market capitalization of Rivian. You could buy Walgreens, Boots Alliance, the entire company, the biggest pharmacy chain in the entire United States. You could buy the biggest grocery store chain in the entire United States, Kroger. You still wouldn't be at it. You could buy Corsair Gaming, a gaming company, streaming company, a leader in that space, still not be at that market cap. And you could buy the entire Tesla company in 2018. And you still would not be at Rivian's valuation right now. You still would imagine that. The biggest pharmacy chain in the entire United States, the biggest grocery store chain in the entire United States, a gaming and a streaming company, and 2018 Tesla that already had crazy demand, that already had an unbelievable brand that even 2018 Tesla brand was a thousand miles ahead of wherever Rivian's at. And even the majority of Tesla's technology in 2018, it was miles ahead of where Rivian is at today. Never mind Elon Musk actually leading that company, right? And you still wouldn't be at this company's market capitalization, okay? I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on here. By the way, download the Hungry Bull for me because I'm having a tough day looking at this valuation, okay? It's, it's gone ridiculous, okay? So, why is Rivian going so nuts? Well, there's a few reasons. One is what I call the Tesla syndrome. So if you are an EV maker, you're gonna be Tesla apparently. Every company is treated as Tesla now, right? It's like, well, Rivian's only 150 billion. Well, it should be a, a trillion dollars like Tesla someday, right? And so this is uh, one of the worst false, uh, I don't know what you call it, a false prophecy. It's probably not even the right term I'm trying to use here. This is one of the most stupid things. I'll just use stupid. It's just stupid, okay? It's like me, uh, you know, I, I go to Chick-fil-A, okay? And I'm like, wow, look at that Chick-fil-A. The line is so long. Look at that drive through It's like wrapping around the property. And I'm like, I'm going to open up a chicken restaurant here, and I'm going to be just as busy. And it's like, no, 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 you're not. You're not going to be as busy as Chick-fil-A. Are you mad? Are you out of your mind? Like, no, that's not the way this works, right? You better make it just as good as products. You better have all that advertising money. You better have uh, quality employees. You better have all the things Chick-fil-A has. And you still probably won't be that, right? And so the fact that the Wall Street right now is just all over this hype stock, Rivian, is like, oh, they're going to be the next Tesla. It's like, 
Okay, do they have Tesla brand? No, they don't, and they never will. Do they have Elon Musk? No, they don't, and they never will. Unless, I don't know, he sells all his Tesla stock and goes out and runs Rivian or something like that. That ain't going to happen, okay? Do they have the engineers Tesla has? No, they don't even have remotely close to, uh, believe me, I know a lot of the Tesla engineers, and woo, those people are on a different level, and they could work for any company in the world, and they choose to work for Tesla, okay? Do they have the IP? No. Do they have, like, any of this stuff? No, they don't have, this is not Tesla, okay? This is not Tesla. And yet, Wall Street is treating like this, like, well, yeah, it, it's Tesla, it, it's Tesla. No, okay? And here's the issue. When you're talking about doing big volumes of EV, there's only one company doing big volumes of EV, and it's this guy, Tesla, okay? Doesn't mean no one can get there over time, but here's the thing that makes t Tesla much different. Well, there's a million things that makes Tesla much different, right? When it comes to good old Tesla Maestla, this is a, a company that is bringing down costs, so they're gonna be able to sell to everyone in the world. They'll sell me my Model S Plaid, which is not in the garage right now, right? At 140,000 plus dollars, and they're gonna be selling 25 to $30,000 cars within the next couple years, okay? Never mind, they already got a, you know, a high 30s car in the market right now in the Model 3, right? And uh, you can get a Model Y for something in the 40s. So they're bringing down costs. Like everybody is gonna be able to be Tesla's customer, never mind when you look at the autonomous taxi network opportunity for Tesla over time and the fact that Tesla is probably going to be the number one player in autonomous taxi networks. And everybody is going to likely be, uh, you know, taking those around in the future, right? And so this is not Tesla. Rivian is not Tesla, okay? Rivian can be its own company and its own cool thing, but it's a pre-revenue company trading at nearly $150 billion, and that is what people don't understand. It's just out of control. Now, there's some people that don't care. I, as a matter of fact, I think most people playing around with Rivian stock are either they don't understand valuation or they're just trying to trade the stock short term, right? Because they're just like, you know, it's exciting, right? It's like it keeps going up. And so it's like, let's ride the wave. Well, boy, is that wave going to come crashing down. That's all I'm going to say about that. And then, like I said, the higher this thing goes, the harder that wave is going to crash. And no one knows if that starts tomorrow or if that starts next week or if that starts next month. But I can promise you that wave is going to come crashing down when people realize, oh, this valuation is getting to ridiculously silly levels. And this company has to prove if it can ever even fulfill its valuation, right? And like, oh man, oh, there's, there's so many places I want to take this. See, when it comes to valuation, the, the way to look at it is, is, especially with high growth stocks, you're going to value several years out, right? So if you look at Tesla, for example, if Tesla was just valued off of what they're doing this year and next year, let's say, for instance, the company would probably be valued anywhere from $100 billion to $200 billion. It's valued at a trillion dollars because of what they're doing over the next five, 10 years, okay? Now with Rivian, here's the thing, Rivian has to get to the level that Tesla's at today to make their current valuation make sense of let's say 150 billion right now there's a there should be a big debate on if Rivian can get to the level that Tesla's at today where they're going to produce you know this year next year between probably 600,000 and maybe a million plus cars right that's a big question if Rivian can do that will they have enough demand to do that right once again Rivian is not Tesla like most if you ask average consumers, they've never heard of this Rivian company in their life, and it's trading at nearly $150 billion valuation. You go to almost anybody's house and you ask them who's Tesla, people know, okay? You ask, oh, that's an electric car maker, yeah, those cars are cool. You ask, you go to the house by house, you ask them who's Elon Musk, they're gonna know who Elon Musk is, okay? This is like super famous stuff. Like, one, you know, one of the most famous companies in the world is Tesla, right? And one of the most famous people in the world is Elon Musk. Rivian, I don't even know who, who's, I'm in the business community, I can't even think of who the heck the, the founder of Rivian is, and I'm in this, and I don't even know, no one knows who the founder of that company is, and no one even knows about this company outside the stock market community, no one, okay, and so that's a big question, if Rivian can ever even get to this level Tesla's today. And they have to get to this level just to make their current valuation make sense. Never mind trying to push the valuation up down the road. So needless to say, if I, like I said, if I'm making one of these videos, it's getting out of hand. And this, this Rivian stock is out of hand. It's going to... Uh it's going to get ugly. That's all I'm going to say about that. It's going to be an ugly fall for that one from Grace. 
And, uh, you know, Wall Street really doesn't care. They'll get out of it, you know, in time. It'll unfortunately be the retail investors that get slammed the worst. And then they're going to hope that it gets back to the valuation it's trading at in November right now. Okay. You're going to have to hope for a long time that, oh, I hope it gets back to that valuation someday. And maybe it does. Maybe it just doesn't. Okay. Right now, you know, yeah, the risk reward's just not there. You know, there's certain time periods when the risk reward is there with the stock, and it like it makes sense, right? And there's certain times when it's just like <laughs> the risk reward's not there. And I can tell you the, the risk reward on Rivian, it's not there. It's not even close to being there. And so, yeah, that, I'll say my two cents about this uh, Rivian stock situation, and um, we'll see. The, the time's ticking on that one. I, am I placing a short position on it or any put options? Nope. Nope. I don't, I don't, uh, no, I have no plans to do that. I mean, maybe if it got too, too crazy, if it goes to 200 billion, man, that would be tempting, but no, I'm not going to do that. Cause I could almost guarantee, well, one, the problem is a lot of times when companies go public, it's hard to get your hands on options and, uh, two, likely the premium would be insane. Cause I'm sure there's a, a lot of people out there that, you know, understand valuations a little bit, understand a little bit about the market and understand what's about to happen in Rivian stock. So anyways, guys, much love as always. Be safe out there. That's all I have to say about that. And have a great day.